So um, let's go. Okay. Sorry. Are we ready? No problems. Um, all right. So uh, it'll just be. I'm not going to ask you the questions. Okay. We'll just. Um, so yeah. maybe just start out by talking about when you became a part of the organization. Okay. okay. And uh, what it was like then, mm -hmm. and then kind of transition into when you were president. Okay. Um, I started coming to ACSP conferences in 1985 in Atlanta, actually, um, which is interesting because I ended up moving to Atlanta 14 years later and, and chairing the planning program at Georgia Tech, so it was sort of a full circle type conversation. I remember coming to the conference and not knowing a single person when I walked in the door and feeling extremely intimidated by all of these names that I had read in the literature and just feeling like a little pipsqueak from the University of Iowa at that time. And uh, it was really a couple of colleagues from institutions around the country sort of took me under their wing. Sandy Rosenblum, Catherine Ross were two people who really just took me under their wing and introduced me to people, made sure I got around and saw people, invited me to events, we went out to dinner, um, and it was just sort of that sense of being part of something that was important and being brought in by what I considered at that time my senior colleagues. And so over time I became more and more involved in the organization, uh, became a governing board member, ran conferences, was the chair of the conference committee for several years, working very closely with Donna Dodd. And I do want to echo what Vim just said in the sense of Donna really bringing a level of professionalism to the organization and really bringing us into the 21st century, kicking and screaming at some in some ways. Um, but I think that has been um, those for me, ACSP is about the role of individuals helping others succeed. And I think as an organization, that's been the gestalt of our organization for years. And it's something that I hope we continue to do for a long, 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 long time. Um, so I served as a conference committee chair. I had a six-year term on the Planning and Accreditation Board. I was active in ACSP. Um, some argue that I have a hard time saying no. And so I did basically anything people asked me to do. Um, and at one point in time, someone suggested I run for president. I lost the first time to Mickey Loria. I will never let him live that down. Um, and he won't either let me live that down. And the uh, second time I ran, I actually... Um, won and became president in 2009, I believe. I think we all have a collective um, ability to forget when we were presidents. Um, I don't think any of us remember exactly when it was, but um, it was an interesting time to be in, in leading an organization of planning academics right after the recession, just as states were really doing amazing cutbacks in higher education, and um, watching some programs really, really struggle. And so even though my initiatives were about undergraduate education, internationalizing our organization, and diversity, um, probably the thing that I couldn't plan for was the recession and figuring out how to support our programs while they went through a very, very difficult time financially and then um, in terms of the level of hope that doctoral students had in securing positions um, when uh, untenured faculty were being let go at some institutions. And so it was a very difficult time. Um, for me personally, we en I ended my presidency on a, on a very personal note that mattered to me. Um, the conference was in Salt Lake City, which is where I grew up. And my mentor in undergraduate school, who sent me off to graduate school, even though I didn't know what graduate school was at the time, I was first generation college educated, and 
he suggested I go to graduate school. Well, he, is, he was still alive and living in Salt Lake City, and I was actually able to invite him to the conference plenary and introduce him to my 700 closest friends um, that were there to um, and thank him publicly and personally for his um, input into my life and got me to where I was that day. And so that was really an important moment. Again, to me, another example of individuals helping individuals in the context of this organization. So um, the future of ACSP, I'm going to say something I think that's pretty controversial, but I think it's time for us old people to step away and let the next generation move on with the organization. It's happening slowly, but there are still many of us that are still trying to play a central role in the organization. And it's, this is an organization that's going to thrive by bringing in people like me 30 years ago. We need to bring in people like me now and get them engaged in the organization. And it's time for people of our generation who all know each other, love each other, see ourselves as the real core of the organization. It's time for us to say we're here to help, but we're not going to be in charge anymore. And it's time for us to step aside and make more room for the next generation and the generation after that, because we're now to two successive ones since my early days in 1985. So um, this will be, I think I have been to every ACSP conference since 1985. So this, other than the ones in Europe, I missed both of the last two um, in Europe, but um, it's an organization that I care very, very deeply about. Um, I would hate ever to see it fail or do poorly, and I'll fight for it to the bitter end. But um, um, it's time for fresh new leadership, and I think we've seen that in the types of people who have been elected president and are now serving on the go governing board. It's great. It's wonderful. So, yeah. I think that's a great ending, unless you have anything else you want to say. I have nothing else Man. to say. Cheryl.